Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day. This is just an odds and ends video from a day in which I only caught one train. I'll put a timestamp in the description so you can jump ahead and see it. It was a nice but cold Saturday and I didn't really have anything to do. I've been trying to chase a train from the Norfolk Southern Guest Street Yard in Cincinnati up to Columbus along the former New York Central Line, which makes up the Dayton District. The line is made up of several routes that have been pasted together over the years, with three alignments going back to the 1920s. The Cleveland, Cincinnati, Chicago, and St. Louis Railroad, or the Big Four, initially built the line that was purchased by the New York Central in 1920. We all know about the New York Central merger with its arch rival, the Pennsylvania Railroad, in 1968, creating the Penn Central. Well, the current alignment uses a combination of both lines. Sadly, that Ten, video will have six, to wait for another five, day. Five, I listened three, to the radio traffic eight, at the Cincinnati Rail five, Yards for several nope. hours and unfortunately did not hear any mention of any of the trains that I knew would be taking the line. I eventually heard NS-171 make its way to Sharon Yard north of town, but that wouldn't be the train I'd eventually catch, though I thought it was at the time. You know what? We'll make it easy on you and go ahead and get that train out of the way right now. I'm set up near the Procter & Gamble facility on the Norfolk Southern tracks. This is just north of NA Tower. You see it's getting dark and both signals were displaying stop indications. I noticed these sensors alongside the tracks. I figure they must be some sort of RFID system or something. If anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. While I was getting some video of them, I was greeted with a pleasant surprise. The signal now displayed an approach aspect it would then upgrade to an approach limited. Finally, something was coming. I got my other camera set up and waited. Wasn't too long and off in the distance I saw a headlight. Sent the drone to check it out. Like I said, I thought this was NS-171, but my radio scanner battery died and I didn't hear the engineer call out the signal. Let's take another look at those engines as they roll by. I always do appreciate seeing any foreign power on these lines. I'm not sure if this Union Pacific unit has been sold or if it just badly needs a paint job. Either way, it's still cool to see. Follow it as it passes any tower and continues south towards Queensgate and the Guest Street Yards.
if you're not from the area, one of the most popular and definitely busiest spots in town is just south of here at Winton Place. It's always a great place and you'll see plenty of trains. You'll also likely run into at least one or two other rail fans there as well. And it still has some of the old color position light signals over the two CSX main lines. When I was starting the day, I noticed this Indiana and Ohio train just sitting here waiting to head south. I frequently see these trains waiting in this area. Can anyone explain why they must sit here oftentimes for half a day or longer? Is it a crewing issue? Is it Norfolk Southern or CSX not wanting to give the INO track time to make their way south? Thanks in advance for any info. Well, that does it for our one train of the day. Now we'll just stop at a couple spots I've seen from the highway or was just curious about over the past couple of years. First up is Barry Yard. This is on the other side of I-75 from where we were, and it's close to where the Norwood Lateral meets the interstate. It's not a big yard by any means, as you can see, and from what I can tell, it's only used as more of a staging area for locals. I was pretty happy to spot this High Hood GP unit. The locomotive is running, but I don't see a crew anywhere nearby, so I think this wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. Remember that Indiana and Ohio train? Well, there it is. Keep in mind, this is several hours before that train came through, and it's still waiting there. We'll head a little east of here and take a quick look at the tracks heading east on the former Norfolk and Western Peavine District. Nothing to see here, really, just some cars waiting for the next destination. Still nothing of note on the radio, and I decided to head to the NS yard in Sharonville. I've been here before, but today I didn't really have anything in particular I wanted to see. I just heard that either NS-170 or 178 would make an appearance and start heading north. While I was there, I did get to see some flat track switching, which I will say was pretty neat to watch in action. Now I get that it takes less crew members to do this, but I don't see how this is any more efficient in the long run than traditional humping. It just seems so time consuming to manually throw the switches and then guess how fast the locomotive needs to be to launch the cars to their destination. But I'm not a railroader, and I'm sure much smarter people than me have this all figured out. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I didn't go on this place until uh, I got that film I woke up and saw. Yeah, I fell asleep last night. I didn't, didn't know I was bumped at all. When I woke up this morning to those messages, I'm like, yeah, get it. Yeah, at least you can get to the point. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But, you know, stuff that it has to be that way, man. Like, something, something. As you can see, the yard is pretty full. The train on the furthest track is NS-179, the counterpart to one of the trains I've been hoping for, 178. NS-179 starts its journey at Mormon Yard in Bellevue, Ohio, then heads south through Columbus before stopping to work at Middletown, here at Sharon Yard, and then on to Emory Gap, and then to Butts Yard in Chattanooga, before completing its trip at Ernest Norris Yard in Irondale, Alabama. I heard 179 prepare to make some kind of move, but I didn't know if it was doubling out or if it was just going to set off some cars. We can see it pull out beyond where the Newcastle district joins the line. I didn't know what it was doing, so after a little while, I went to NA Tower, assuming that it would make its way there shortly. You remember, the train we saw at NA Tower had a BNSF painted leader. I don't think that's what's on the point here for 179. I guess it had some more work to do in the yard, and whatever that first train was, it must have come down the Newcastle line. Lastly, we'll take a quick look at that Indiana and Ohio lead locomotive. Doesn't look like the crew is here, but the motor seemed to be running. I'm guessing it's easier to leave it this way than to shut everything down. Anyone who can shed some light on it, I would certainly appreciate any information. Well, I know this isn't our usual trip, but this is really what many, if not most of my rail fan days are like. Not seeing any trains and just kind of poking around the area to see what's there. I am working on two other videos currently and hope to have them out soon. Until then, I hope you have a great day.